hi everyone and welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today we are going to be upgrading the Thrustmaster Hotas Throttle. For some unknown reason, um, they strayed from the original design by utilizing that as a slew sensor. Um, rather than use a proper analog analog um, axis, they decided to make this weird looking thing that looks like a hat and then put a terrible mouse touchpad thing from a phone, from a Nokia phone made in 2003 for some reason. Um, the problem with this is, for starters, it's not a replica, it's not true to the original, it's one of the only things on this whole setup that's not true to the original, and it makes it unbelievably difficult to slew your sensors around, um, which is the whole reason it's there. So what I'm doing today is I'll show you a kit that you can buy online. Basically, I'm unscrewing it, taking that whole off and whole thing off and putting a analog axis in there. All right, so first thing I have to do is uh, just pull that side console out, unbolt the side. There's four bolts and it slides back out. Because I throttled down, it's about to crash. Okay, so here we are out on the workbench. Um, obviously got the throttle out of the cockpit and we're about to start pulling it apart. So the kit that I'm using today is from a company called Delta Sim Electronics. So you'll buy their slew sensor upgrade kit uh, at this website. It is 42 pounds and 99 cents, which is about 77 Australian dollars. Um, and this is what you get. Basically, it is an analog slew sensor that is a direct replacement for that one and has a plug and play plug. So it just goes straight into the existing electronics in that throttle and um, it's good to go. So I, it's always been on my radar to fix this thing because I had it so much and most people do. Um, I was originally, I originally bought this one here, which is obviously from a PlayStation controller and I was just gonna pop that off. Um, and I had a 3D printed hat made for it. So that was gonna go on there. And then I was gonna work, work out a way to get this thing mounted in there. It would have taken a whole bunch of grinding. And I also would not have been able to interface that with the existing electronics. My plan was to run new cables, drill a hole in the bottom of it, have the cables going out to a different card. So that, that analog one I was going to use was going to be completely separate. Um, thankfully, Delta Sim came out with this idea, so that can get effed off, and this is the one we're going to be running with. So inside the kit, you get the slew sensor itself. Um, you can see that it's a pretty high quality 3D print. Uh, I think it's based on the same controller. Um, However, it's obviously got a whole bunch of custom electronics on it and it's plug and play and it comes with a calibration tool so you can um, get it working. It also comes with two different gates. So wait for it to focus, sorry. It's focusing on this. So you can see that it's got this square gate there or you can have a circular gate in there. I'm likely gonna use this circular one, I think, but I'll test both of them. And that's just up to your preference, whichever sort of axis you want, you can use. Um, all right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in um, Target, the software I just downloaded from the Thrustmaster website. Um, you can see that I've connected the throttle right here and I just pushed Get Firmware and it tells me I'm Firmware 19. These are the instructions that came with the um, upgrade kit. Obviously, there's all the parts you get. Uh, it says down here, there you go. The latest firmware version is version 23 and your firmware update does not show this version, then you may need to update your drivers. So what I have to do now is go onto the Thrustmaster website and download the, um, the firmware update and get that done and hope I don't brick it. I've never needed to update the firmware on this thing before um, and I read a whole bunch of horror stories about people bricking them so I never bothered doing it. It's never failed me, but anyway, looks like I'm gonna have to now. All right, so I just jumped on the Thrustmaster support website um, and found the throttle page. Down here you can see the drivers with the new firmware and there's also a PDF that shows you how to do the full firmware um, update. So I'll do that now and then we'll get into the actual pulling it apart. Okay, so this is the tool that you download off the Thrustmaster website. Um, obviously, I can see that I've got version 19 and it's going to update it with version 23. Um, so all I have to do is click OK, hopefully. 
the throttle is flashing its lights at me. It looks like it's updating. There you go, looks like it's done. Hopefully everything works. Looks like it's got version 23 on it now. Oh, whoops, I shouldn't have clicked that again, but whatevs. Hope I haven't just bricked it by accidentally clicking OK instead of clicking. No, nah, looks like it's just done it again. OK, let's just check in target. Alright, so you can see that I've now got 23, which means I'm good to start doing the teardown. Okay, first part of the update is pulling this um, throttle here apart. So there's one screw just there, and then there is another three screws just there, and then you'll be able to remove this side cover. So let's do that now. Probably unplug it before I go pulling things apart. So they're pretty big screws, as you can see. Alright, and now I can already feel it's loose. Should just prise apart. So you can see just there, that's the plug for the slew sensor that I'm going to disconnect, and then that whole sensor there is going to come out. So I'll just unplug that. Alright, so there is two small clips in there. You just need to push them in, and you can see that that sensor is coming out already, see? There's one on either side. There you go, it's popped out. And then that's the offending piece. Alright, so you can see the hole in the throttle there, and that's where the original old sensor was mounted. Um, it was a bit hard to show up, but you can see the two clips on it that were holding it in. It was really easy to get it out. You basically just have to put your finger in, put a little bit of pressure on one, and prise it out. Um, uh, you just have to be careful when you're putting it back together. Um, you can see the holes in the side there where these long screws were mounted through. Um, they'd be mounted in like that. And then these plastic tubes go over them to protect the wiring from the sharp edges on those screws. Um, so when you're putting it back together, you just have to make sure that all three of these posts, one of them actually fell off. You probably heard it while I was moving it around. It's down the bottom there are in place and there's no wires pinched before you screw it back together. Alright, so there's the old compared to the new. Obviously you can see true analogue and this weird digital thing. Alright, so it comes partially assembled in the bag when you get it. You just need to pull that off gently. And then the provided Allen key will unscrew those and the gate will come off. Alright, so that is the new unit ready to go into the throttle. Um, so it comes with two gates, you get your choice, it's basically personal preference of which one you want to use, if you want to use a square sort of hole or the circle hole. I'm probably going to try the circle one first and then I'll see how it feels and I can always swap and change. Alright, so when you're putting the new unit in, you can see that there is a gateway just in the bottom there. Um, and it's important that you, you orientate this the right way so that that little gate fits in that. So all you have to do is slide that in. And it will fit in like that. So I'm still putting a bit of pressure on the back of it just to hold it in place. There it is, it's clipped in. And you can see that little gate is in the gateway there. Now all I have to do is screw the top piece on it and that's what holds it in place.
All right, I'm just going to do them finger tight. You don't want to go too tight because it is just into a plastic thread, I think. Uh, so now that's on. That's held in there. You can just slide this back on. Like that. All right, now let's get the let's get it back together. So putting it back together is just the exact opposite of the way I did. I just need to get some pliers so I can get that out. Oh yeah, first things first. Don't forget about this. You just connect the wire up to the existing. Now we're ready to go back together. Come on, come inside then. You were just crying to get let outside. You've been out for like 30 seconds. Alright, I'll just use these pliers to grab that thing that I dropped. Alright, you're just going to make sure those are all on. That in there, make sure the wiring actually I might put that in that way. And just gently slide that in. I think we're all good to go. Let's put one screw here. On this side, just use a light to make sure that there is no wires and all the tubes are there, which they are. And then drop those in. It's a really strong magnet, that thing. Alright, and there she is. Much, much, much better. Proper analog access. Now what I'll do is um, take you through the calibration tool and we'll get it in the game and see how much better it is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just jump into game controls in Windows and make sure... that it's been reset to default. Um, I can't click apply, so you know I've never changed anything, so it already is at default. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. So next thing, you just go on the website and download the um, calibration tool. Uh, the application is just here. Throttle, there we go. Run that. Plug the throttle to PC, attach the dual throttle levers together, and press spacebar, which they are. Move the slew axis slowly to reach all directions, then press space. Plug the throttle to the PC on our release. Release it to center and press space. Set dual throttle to max and trim to increase. Press space. Set dual throttle to off, trim to decrease, press space, dual throttle to idle, over the notch, and the trim to center detent, press space, unplug the USB throttle, completed calibration. Now we'll just jump into Windows USB controllers, plug it back up. And we'll oh, it works. Look at that. I like it. Alright, so I originally videotaped uh, full mission with the old slew sensor and I was gonna show you that first, but I realized that my camera was in selfie mode, so I ended up with a 30 minute recording of my forehead. So what I've done now is this is just the screen capture of my main instrument panel. This so 
what you're looking at now on the right MFD is me slewing the sensors with the old slew sensor still in the Warthog. You can see that it's really jaggy and it's hard for me to um, sort of go at slow speeds without going full speed, left full speed, right full speed, up and down. Um, you'll see when I'm trying to change to targets, it is really jaggy and I frequently go over the target and I frequently miss the target completely. So you can see me here trying to track between these three tanks and you can see that I just keep missing them. That's with the old sensor. Alright, so the next video will be me flying with the new slew sensor and we'll hopefully see a massive improvement. Okay, so here we are flying. Um, I've got the new slew sensor in. I don't know if you can actually see it with the head mount, but there it is. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just practice tracking some targets down on the ground here. So I can already tell that I've got more control over the slew. Uh, so here's three tanks. See if I just touch it a little bit, I can move it much more slower than the old one was sort of jerky. And then if I want to move fast to another set of targets, yeah, I like it. It's going to take a bit of getting used to because I, um, it feels different on the finger. But I can definitely track things, I can move with more precision. So the jerkiness of the TGP is not me moving my finger like that, that's just the the laser or the TGP is picking a point on the ground and tracking it. Like I'm not touching anything now but it knows to track that tank, it's the electronics in the actual TGP. Um, but the slewing, if I slew between these three you can see how much more accurately I could do it. And then if I want to go precision, just raise it up a bit. Yeah, it's good, I like it. Let's uh, give him some Maverick. Pull up, pull up. What's that paper down? Your sass. Let's deal with this first. That is one of these switches is loose. You give it some burp because why not? Alright, so it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, I can tell already, because my finger feels weird on the throttle. I've realised that I used to rest my finger on the top of the old one, because it was a static piece there, and I used to use that as a way to find where the nipple was, but now, because I'm so used to sort of sitting like that, every time I throttle forward, I'm sometimes bumping the, the new analogue stick, so I'm just going to have to retrain myself to sort of keep my fingers off it. I can already tell it's an improvement. Um, it's not as jaggy on the, when I'm tracking between targets, like that's pretty smooth. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. I'll give you one of, oh, no track launch inhibit. You can have that. And then your friend can have this. Hey, Pull up. Up. 
So you can see I've got the track IR on now. It looks weird on the video because it's tracking my head and not my eyes. But if I can just, I just pause it with the switch. So now I can look around as normal. But then when I'm doing crazy shit, I need to look off my shoulder or I can just push that button and then I can look off the right wing. Sorry, left wing.